Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. We're checking out Crusader Kings 3 today. This is a grand strategy game where you can be a psychopath in limitless ways. Look at these three. They're already like, I know what you're thinking. You're going to make our lives difficult, aren't you? This video is also sponsored by Xbox Game Pass for PC, where you can play Crusader Kings 3 right now, as well as over 100 other games. And you can start your first month right now for $1 using my link in the description. Let's go be a well-adjusted ruler. See, you can tell this is going to be good. Just look at this loading art. Look at this loving family right here. Uh-oh, what's happening? And you can tell he means business because he brought two blades. So here we are at this big old map, also known as most of the game. We have to pick a starting place, a realm, a country, a land. And from there, we're going to create roots and try to get by with all these other countries, probably trying to create alliances with us, as well as kill us. The possibilities are endless. Anyway, the year is 1066. And just think, we can pick any of these. Oh my god, there's so many options. You know what? Let's go with France. All right, Mary Primarily because their king is 14 years old, which indeed, if you look it up, is historically accurate. But everything we're going to do is probably not. Yep, there I am. King Philip, Philippe. Felipe, let's learn a little bit more about you. Oh God, or a lot more about you. So there's me, unmarried. If I die, everything goes to this fellow, which is our nine-year-old brother. Because as you can see down here, we have no kids yet, obviously. We also have some traits here. For example, we're calm, zealous, paranoid, and curious. As you can see, these things give us stat bonuses or take some things away. Overall, seems like a decent lad. Here's all you need to know. We're France. Whether he wants to or not, we're gonna get married soon. And we're part of House Kepe. That last part is really only important because I realized we can change that. Oh my God, I can change the motto too. Well, let's get rid of this. Goodbye, real history. Hello, house of mmm. Oh my God, can I just keep going? Dang it, name is too long. So be it, instead of being the house of mmm, we'll just have to be the house of mmm, stop. Much better. And for our motto, victory through my tummy. <laughs> <laughs> you remember how they used to talk that way in 1066 AD? All the rulers walking around talking about their tummies. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the house of mmm. I can rename the dynasty too? Founded in 866 AD by King Robert of France, the Robertine dynasty was then renamed in 1066, later known as the Hungy for Brecky dynasty. <laughs> house mmm. House of the Hungy for Brecky dynasty. <laughs> Victory through my tummy. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god. Look at our beautiful realm. This is the most beautiful thing I think I've ever seen. Oh no. I can rename France. All right, here we go. Name, mmm, adjective, tasty. Look at this. Here's my realm. The kingdom of mmm. <laughs> now I hold the title to the kingdom of mmm. And everything past that is just impossible to read. And now you might be wondering, why did I do mmm twice? Because it didn't let me do enough mmms the first time. And just when you thought things couldn't get better, we can customize them. Let's change his hair. What are hair loops? Yep, done and done. And for headwear, I don't want to do something like this because I don't want to hide that beautiful haircut. Ah, there we go. It highlights it rather than hides it. And lastly, for clothes, like, yeah, sure, we could do any of these and they all look just fine. But nothing says kingly to me like prison rags. Goodbye, old king. Hello, sweet prince. And now it's time to find you a spouse. We're going to go with Charna Frost Whisper solely because of her name. Also helps that she has pretty good stats, a pretty nice house shield, and send that proposal. <laughs> and look how lucky we are. We've received a missive from the King of Poland. I love that this has to go in every correspondence with us. You will be betrothed to my courtier. And just like that, they're betrothed. Try to look a little happier, you two. Well, now that we've gotten the basic stuff out of the way, let's handle a couple of other basic needs. It's kind of a problem that our Archbishop doesn't endorse us. So let's see if we can improve his opinion of us. So first, because it gives me the option, let's go ahead and put you in a nightgown. Give you a crown for no reason. Give you some nice Charles Manson hair. How about a big bushy beard? There you go, from Archbishop to King Theoden from Lord of the Rings. I love how embarrassed he looks in his profile picture now. Everyone else looks all dignified, holding a scroll or a sword or a dagger. And he's up there like, um, I'm an Archbishop. I'm sure there's a reason that I just don't know, by the way. But I can't actually change anyone else's look. <laughs> just the Archbishop. Okay, but anyway, we need to turn that thumbs down into a nice big thumbs up. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to send him a nice gift. That'll increase his opinion of me. I give him 50 gold. 
gold, and his opinion goes up, and he endorses me. Yes, send that gift. Ta-da! Now we're at a nice plus 12, and he likes us. So these numbers here, we want these to be as high as possible. And this chancellor, just not cutting it. So let's appoint a new one. And it looks like Baron Valerian here is the best choice in for the jobbin. Goodbye, other guy. Hello, new posed dude person. One of the things I really enjoy in this game is the random events. For example, behold, our king's arch nemesis. Vainmond has been pestering me for a long time now. She has everyone believing she is a saint, but she mocks me relentlessly for every tiny mistake I make. I cannot get her to stop no matter what I do. Uh, sir, you're a king and you're 15 years old. She is a toddler. I'm sure we can handle this one without getting too upset about it. The following has happened. She is our bully. But that's okay, he's clearly got other things to worry about right now. I am entranced. What is this feeling? This longing? He's discovered girls. And just like that, some amazing things have happened. He's an adult now. As I take my first steps into adulthood, I find myself reminiscing about some of the people who have made an impact on the man I've become. The things my bully Vainmond, now seven years old, put me through as a child still weigh heavily on me. And every time I see her, my mood is sure to turn sour. You won't forget Vainmond anytime soon. Oh, God. And he gained the trait of drunkard. Now that's a face that definitely won't forget. But no time to think about that. The king and Charna got married finally. And look how happy he is if he weren't so drunk. And now that he's a happy, smiling adult, we have to pick a lifestyle for him. Because he studied diplomacy in school or whatever, we get a bonus. So we're gonna go ahead and pick that. And of the three focuses we can do, we're gonna do a family focus. Because it gives us plus 20% of fertility, and we want to produce a lot of children. Eventually, we'll be able to fill all these things in, but we haven't unlocked them yet, so more on that later. So as mentioned, as a grand strategy game, there's a lot of different things we can do. For example, we could form an alliance with Brittany. Probably not a bad idea. And one way we can do that, we can take a look at their beautiful rulers, we can look at their heir, and we can see that at the age of eight, he is not yet betrothed. Well, let's change that. How would you like to marry my sister, Princess Emma of Mmm? Now, it's true that her doing this makes her part of their dynasty and not mine, but whatever. They're just a sibling. Now that Emma and Alan are betrothed, we have an alliance. Isn't politics grand? But this is kind of all in the service of one thing, which I think is going to be the whole point of this playthrough. I want to draw your attention to one county in particular. Now this one, it's special, and I'll tell you why. These two run the place, Hildegard's, seems innocent enough, and they have one child. It's her, Vainmond. That's right, it's your bully. Oh, and look, she's already betrothed. Have him killed. Now the odds aren't great. 32% chance of succeeding, 47% chance of not getting caught. It's gonna take 12 months. But don't forget that bullying she did when she was a toddler. So let's give it a shot. Oh boy, here we go. When the time comes, my agents will need a safe escape route out of Count Richard's castle, should anything go wrong. A detailed map of the local forest with all its hidden paths and caves would be an invaluable resource. And I can pay someone to do it for me, which costs me money and stress. And I have to trust this guy, who has a 37% chance of bragging about his wealth later. Or I can explore the forest myself and map out the surrounding area with a 60% chance of mapping out the area myself, a 30% chance of getting lost, and a 10% chance of getting lost overnight. I'll take those odds. Uh-oh, <laughs> you got lost in the forest overnight. Of course you did, you drunk. Silver lining, though, while I'm off getting lost in the forest, my lovely wife is pregnant. Cannot wait to hold the babe in my arms. And look at that, we've had our first child. Husband, let us name him after you. Actually, I had something else in mind. How about lunchtime? What do you think of that name? Magnificent. Meanwhile, our scheme is progressing nicely. One of my agents is preparing a special trip for young Renaud. The child trusts he will be brought on an enjoyable day in the forest. Do you hear this ominous wind? Are you ready for your very safe adventure in the forest? He will unfortunately get lost and be impossible to find before nightfall. Oh, he was so young too. Child lost in the forest. It happens tragically often. Well, buckle up. Let's see how this goes. Well, there we have it. He's dead. The search went long into the night before it was called off and reconvened at dawn. It was only then that the body was found, bloodied, mangled, and torn after an attack of- Oh god, let's skip to the end. Thankfully, everyone agrees it was a terrible tragedy, and my involvement, and the existence of any scheme, remains unknown. That'll teach you, eight-year-old. Now sit there unbetrothed and think about what you've done. Oh wow, I got so involved in that, I didn't notice something. We have some new neighbors over here. I guess they took a piece out of the Holy Roman Empire, and also someone 
took a piece out of me. England. Now, as much as I would like to declare war to get that land back, because I have a Cassus Belly, or as the game reminds me, a cause for war, I'm pretty sure I can't take all of them, because they're England, and they have more allies than I do. So let's try something else instead. Like, instead, how about I add a perk point to befriend, and then I ask old Robert here if maybe we can be best buds. I know there's only a 30% chance, but I have to try. And while that political victory is happening, let's head on down here to Barcelona, where I can also declare war, because my vassal here has a claim of his own, and also their army is inferior to ours. Who am I to say no to a good war? So let's raise up our armies, of which we have about 5,000 levies, which are like kind of untrained soldiers and stuff. So we're going to create some men-at-arms regiments of some slightly better fighters. Each type kind of has their pros and cons. All you really need to know is I'm going kind of cheap. I'd like to win this war on a budget, thank you. Okay, with my army assembled, let us head to Barcelona. Victory will be ours. Here we are in Barcelona, spending five months to siege it. Look at that, right as we get to the end, we have a new son, who we're definitely not going to name Guillaume. Not when we can name him Second Breakfast. May you grow to be strong and wise, my son. Ah, and there we go. Greetings, King Philippe of... Mm. You are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end of this bloodshed, I will comply to your demands. And then we get all this stuff, and all it took was nine years. Do you remember where you were during the Tasty War of 1072 to 1081? And we spitefully take that from Barcelona and add it to the glory of... Mm. Now we can disband all of our armies, and then we can just go ahead and... Whoa, province? Forez? Oh, wow, I guess I should have been paying better attention in the last nine years. Oh, you know what else we need to do? Let's see, where are you? There you are. Well, you two have looked better. How's your daughter? Don't worry, I haven't forgotten what the hell happened here. How come he's in jail? Okay, you know what, lady? You're really ruining my scheme here. I wanted to upset you by killing your first husband, which I did, but now your second husband's in jail. How are you gonna have kids now so I can keep messing with you through them? I'm just gonna have to take matters into my own hands, I guess. Let's see, 34%, 49%, 11 months, perfect. And he's dead. As planned, the servant gained access to his chambers, no doubt to his great confusion. Of course, the confusion must have passed once the servant unsheathed his dagger. Ha! Let that be a lesson to you. In fact, let me arrange the next one. How about this guy? I mean, look at that match made in heaven. Chance of children, medium. That's really all I need to hear to get you crazy kids together. Now go forth and have many beautiful kids that I'm definitely not gonna try to kill later. Oh, and more good news. Lunchtime is now an adult. They grow up so fast. Fast, don't they? Meanwhile, Vainmon still hasn't had any kids. Look, you two aren't getting any younger. Would it help if I took care of your mom? Since if she has an accident, you inherit the land? Ah, the things I'll do for future spite. Okay, well, that's handled. By that, I mean she's dead. There you go. The property is yours now. Make some offspring for my petty revenge. Meanwhile, I'd like the world to meet my beautiful baby daughter. Elevensies. Oh, and you know what else? It's time to visit Barcelona again, because we haven't messed with them enough. Ah, uh, see, that's a much more tasty war, isn't it? It only took 14 months instead of nine years. Blah, 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 greater foe. That's the face of disappointment. Thanks for the land. Look at that. The realm of mm is expanding. And look, more celebration. Another child. Brunch. Speaking of babies, my mortal enemy finally had a kid. Hello there, child. Little Swan Hildas. Don't worry, you're safe for now. I have my own pregnancy to celebrate. I should probably make sure I haven't doubled up on names accidentally. Let's see, we've got lunchtime, second breakfast, eleven Z's, and brunch. Oh no, did I skip first breakfast? Oh well, we'll just keep going. Tea time. In between bouts of babies and messing with Vainmond, I go around declaring frivolous wars to capture more land. Oh geez, what have you two been doing? A shameful truth has reached the light of day. My vassal, Count Raymond, has an extramarital affair with my vassal, Countess Vainmond. How could you do this to my carefully set out plans? Actually, you know what? Maybe this will work out. I get to imprison her. And as I have a fair reason, I can do it without being a tyrant. Well, that's too bad, isn't it? And she's been showing signs of pregnancy for some time now. And everyone thought that her husband, Count Arnold, was the father. Now it has become clear the real soon-to-be father is Count Raymond. I shall call this scandal Vaingate. I like I like how he looks way more shocked, even though she's the one in prison. Just goes to show you, anything can happen in this game. I had all these long-term plans for Vainmond here, and yet here she is now, in jail. But that's okay, because she still had two kids that... Oh, maybe just one. The other one died in a siege. Medieval times were rough. Anyway, new plan. Vainmond, you stay in jail, and watch as I slowly but surely discreetly kill every member of your family, except your bastard child. They're safe.
in prison for the rest of its life. And that's just one of the many tales that we can tell here in Crusader Kings 3. Soon all of my kids will become of age just like brunch. And even though eventually all kings must die, like King Philippe, after 39 years of playing as him, we pass on the mantle to our son, King Lunchtime, who will dutifully carry on the work of his father, neglecting his entire nation to make this person's life miserable forever for that one time that she said one crappy thing as a kid. And his wife is like, you get him, Lunchtime. You show them who's boss. I want to thank Xbox Game Pass for PC again for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out the game for yourself, the link you need is in the description and get your first month for $1. So I hope you had fun. I know I did. And I'll see you next time.